On the 23rd of February 1942, a four-man crew aboard a Bristol Beaufort torpedo bomber is returning from a mission to Norway. As they make their way back to base in Scotland, the aircraft develops a serious problem and their worst fears are realised when the engines fail, leaving them with no other choice but to ditch into the icy waters of the North Sea. Trapped in the middle of Norway and over 100 miles from shore, with no hope of rescue, their fate seems sealed. And just when all hope seems lost, one unlikely hero emerges. In the early afternoon of Monday the 23rd of February 1942, six Bristol Beaufort torpedo bombers of No. 42 Squadron RAF were being prepared for a routine anti-shipping mission over the waters off the Norwegian coast. The squadron was based at RAF Lukas in Fife, Scotland, but also had detachments of Beauforts positioned at the southern tip of the Shetland Islands, at RAF Sumbra. Originally built in 1936 as a civilian airport, the airfield was taken over by the RAF in 1940 as its position was of significant importance in protecting Allied convoys as well as anti-shipping and anti-submarine patrols. RAF Sumbra was home to a number of different squadrons during the war, including No. 269 Squadron, which flew a variety of aircraft including the Lockheed Hudson and consolidated PBY Catalina flying boats, and No. 86 Squadron which also operated the Beaufort torpedo bomber. The Bristol Beaufort was a British twin-engine torpedo bomber. It was designed by the Bristol Aeroplane Company as a successor to the earlier Blenheim bomber and was intended to serve as a torpedo bomber for the RAF's Coastal Command. The Beaufort first flew in 1938 and entered service with the RAF in 1940. It was initially armed with a single 1,000 pound torpedo, but later versions could also carry bombs or death charges. The aircraft was powered by two Bristol Taurus radial engines, which gave it a top speed of around 265 miles per hour, or 426 kilometers per hour, and a range of over 1,400 miles, that's 2,300 kilometers. The Beaufort saw extensive use during the early years of the war, particularly in the Mediterranean and the North Sea, where it was used to attack German U-boats and shipping. It also saw action in the Pacific, where it was used by the Royal Australian Air Force and the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Despite its success in some areas, the Beaufort was not without its problems. Its engines were prone to overheating and it suffered from poor handling characteristics, which made it difficult to fly in bad weather. As a result, it was eventually replaced in frontline service by the more advanced Bristol Beaufighter. At approximately 2.30 in the afternoon of Monday 23rd of February 1942, the six Beauforts took off from Aurea Sumbra and set a course east towards Norway on the hunt for enemy shipping. After an hour en route, they arrived at the search area and began scanning the waters for enemy shipping or U-boats. But following a few hours of searching and with daylight fading, they had only discovered the occasional merchant vessel or whaler all of whom were flying friendly colours, and so it was time to depart and set a course to return to their home base of RAF Lucas. On board Beaufort M for Mike, the four-man crew of Pilot Squadron Leader Cliff, Weapons Operator Pilot Officer Tessier, Navigator Flying Officer MacDonald and Air Gunner Sergeant Venn also set a course for Lucas. Their aircraft unfortunately started to show signs of engine trouble. The problems rapidly deteriorated when eventually the Beauforts suffered total engine failure. Squadron leader Cliff prepared his crew for ditching and using all his skill he landed his stricken aircraft on the water. With the call to abandon the aircraft, the four aircrew hastily climbed on board a life raft with their emergency equipment and Winky, a homing pigeon that was also on board. During World War II, RAF Coastal Command carried homing pigeons on board their aircraft for use in emergency situations. The pigeons were used as a means of communication in the event that the aircraft's radio or other communication systems failed. If an aircraft was forced to ditch in the sea, for example, the crew could release a pigeon carrying a message with their position and the nature of the emergency. The pigeon would then fly back to a nearby shore-based loft, where the message would be retrieved and relayed to the appropriate authorities. Pigeons were chosen for these roles because of their homing instinct and ability to fly long distances, even in adverse weather conditions. 
They were a reliable and low-tech means of communication, in situations where other methods were not available or were too risky to use. Now, it would have been the case that the aircraft's last known coordinates would be attached to the pigeon before releasing it, but unfortunately, in this case, the position of the aircraft was unknown. Winky was released and she immediately flew westwards towards Scotland, but carrying no information that could help the Beaufort crew. They simply watched her fly off into the dark against the backdrop of nothing but the waves of the North Sea. 120 miles away in the Dundee suburb of Broughty Ferry lived George Ross, an experienced pigeon handler and owner of Winky. He was very surprised when, early the following morning, he discovered that Winky had returned, very exhausted and covered in a good amount of oil. He immediately contacted RAF Lucas to inform them of Winky's return. Despite having never received a distress call, 42 Squadron knew that one of their aircraft was missing, having failed to return the previous night, and they knew that Winky was assigned to fly with Squadron Leader Cliff's aircraft. But they had no way of knowing how far out to sea the missing crew were, or indeed on which bearing to send a search party. George Ross, however, was able to assess the condition of Winky, and his knowledge and experience allowed him to estimate that Winky must have flown somewhere between 100 and 150 miles, due to a level of exhaustion. So this gave them an approximate range. Attention was then drawn to the oil coating Winky's feathers, and it was thought that she may have spent some time resting on an oil tanker. On the north bank of the River Forth, Rossyth's shipping control was contacted to see if there were any oil tankers off the coast to the east the previous night. And indeed there was. Using the coordinates of the tanker's position, an estimated range and bearing was now calculated and a search party hastily arranged. At RAF Lugas at 0720, the first of five Lockheed Hudson aircraft of 320 Squadron took off, followed at intervals by the remaining Hudsons and they were accompanied by Bristol Blenheims of 489 Squadron of the Royal New Zealand Air Force, also out of Lucas, as well as a consolidated Catalina. 42 Squadron also launched seven Beauforts in search of their missing squadron mates. Following a few hours of searching, at 10.47, the crew of the first Hudson spotted a dinghy with four men on board. They had been found at coordinates 55 degrees 43 minutes north, 0 degrees 44 minutes east, some 120 miles southeast of RAF Lucas. As the Hudson flew over the relieved crew, a Thornaby bag consisting of food, drink and cigarettes were dropped to sustain the crew until they could be picked up. A high-speed launch had been dispatched to pick them up and arrived on scene at 2.15 in the afternoon and the crew were assessed to be slightly bruised and suffering from frostbite, but otherwise in good shape. And by 6.30pm, all of the search and rescue aircraft had landed safely, and the four crew members, Cliff, Tessier, McDonald and Venn, were being medically checked over. And Winky had been thrust very much into the limelight as a hero, and later was a guest of honour at a squadron dinner in her honour, where she was toasted by the officers and nominated for an award. Created by Maria Dickin, the founder of the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals, the PDSA, which is a British veterinary charity, the Dickin Medal had been created to honour the work of animals in World War II. The bronze medallion, which carried the words for gallantry and we also serve, was first awarded on the 2nd of December 1943 to three pigeons, one of which was Winky. As of February 2022, the Dickin Medal has had 74 recipients, one of the most recent being a German short-haired pointer named Hertz, while serving in Afghanistan with the RAF police. After Winky died, she underwent taxidermy and was donated by George Ross, along with her Dickin Medal, to Dundee Art Galleries and Museums, where she presently resides. Thanks very much for watching. Please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing.